This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everybody. Am I audible to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Today, we will be discussing about a topic, a vascular condition in retina. Vascular, it is one of the vascular disorders which occur in retina, which can affect the visual acuity of a person very severely. The patient can have it is sudden visual loss. So it is one of the cause of sudden visual loss because any vascular lesion in the retina can affect the vision. So I think the retinal artery occlusion has already been covered for you. Today we'll be discussing retinal vein occlusions. So retinal vein occlusions can broadly be classified into two main types, central and branch retinal vein occlusions. Central retinal vein occlusion, branch retinal vein occlusion. So central retinal vein occlusion is also known as, in a short form, known as CRVO. Similarly, branch retinal vein occlusion is also known as BRVO. So before going into the clinical features, uh, what is the basic anatomy? Where is the level of occlusion which is affecting the vision very severely? If you see this picture, now this is the this segment is nothing but the optic nerve. Okay, this is the optic nerve head here, and this is the optic nerve. This is the sclera. Then the inner coat here, the middle layer that is the uvea, and this is the retinal layer. You can see all the ten layers of retina right from the pigment epithelium to the internal limiting membrane, and you can see the blood vessels, both veins and arteries which are entering and coming out through the optic nerve if you see the red one is the artery which is piercing the optic nerve and it is branching out at the optic nerve head similarly the once the branching occurs of the retinal arteries it proceeds further it further branches out then it forms smaller arterioles and capillaries and then the venous drainage is there which occurs on the retina is mainly from the veins so the veins again uh, tributaries contribute to form the veins similarly in all four segments you have superior temporal inferior temporal superior nasal inferior nasal and they all join and uh, combine to form central retinal vein so this is the basic anatomy you should understand so the problem here, what is the problem? Where is the central retinal vein occlusion? Now this is called the central retinal vein. So when the occlusion is at the level of central retinal vein, what is the picture? When the occlusion it is, is at the level of one of the tributaries or branches, the, the, then what is the picture? So the picture is slightly different and the way it affects the vision and the way it uh, affects the prognosis for the patient is also slightly different. So branch retinal vein is the first thing we will go through. Then we will see the central retinal vein occlusion. So to understand how it presents, what, what are the consequences, we have to first understand the basic anatomy, how the blood vessels are distributed in the retina. So in the retina, whenever there is a, this is the fundamental point which you have to understand. In the retina, whenever there is a retinal artery, retinal artery occlusion, it manifests as edema. It manifests as retinal edema. Whereas in when there is an occlusion in the vein, it manifests as hemorrhage. It manifests as hemorrhage. Hemorrhage means there is blood spilled over all over the retina depending on the site of occlusion. So these two points are the fundamental basic differences between artery occlusion and vein occlusion. So whenever there is an artery occlusion, 
there is retinal edema there is there are no hemorrhages in an artery occlusion there are full of hemorrhages it is filled with hemorrhages whenever there is a vein occlusion so now the issue is why does the vein occlusion occur what is the reason for the vein occlusion to occur so the it all depends on the compressibility of the vein so if the vein is pressed by an artery very heavily so when does an artery press the vein very heavily when the artery when it presses the vein when it, i'm talking in simple terms i'm not talking in medical terms in simple terms so that you understand the pathophysiology when the vein is pressed by an artery so when does an artery press a vein when the artery becomes thick so when does the artery become thick when they, the artery is sclerosed or when there is atherosclerosis in older age group so this is a common manifestation in a older age group so when the artery presses on the vein it can cause occlusion it can affect the drainage of the veins so the blood gets spilled all over the retina and it affects the vision so that is the main pathophysiology in vein occlusion so compression of the artery over the vein whatever is the reason it could be due to thickness or uh, when there is an increased thickness it presses over the vein so it affects the normal laminar flow of the blood in the veins and once it affects the blood flow coagulation occurs and then thrombosis forms and this cascade of events begin one after another which cause which cause the complete occlusion so now what are the different types of retinal vascular disorders before we go into vein occlusion we will just run through different types of vascular disorders all these are vascular disorders retinal vein occlusion retinal artery occlusion hypertensive retinopathy sickle cell retinopathy retinopathy of prematurity retinal telangiectasias retinal artery microaneurysm radiation retinopathy these are all vascular disorders we are not discussing all of these we are discussing only the vein occlusion so what is the predisposing factor for vein occlusion in vein occlusion the main systemic factor which causes the vein occlusion is increasing age hypertension diabetes abnormalities of coagulation so as i said something has to press on the vein for the vein occlusion to occur when it presses on the vein the flow of blood is affected the coagulation cascade begins and it leads to thrombosis of the veins and then there is an occlusion of the vein so the blood flow is affected and the blood gets spilled all over the retina so the main systemic factors for that are increasing age hypertension diabetes and abnormalities in coagulation these are the main factors systemic factors as far as ocular factors are concerned there can be inflammation of the veins that is called as periplebitis due to some infection or due to some inflammatory condition or connective tissue disorders or some arthritis something there can be some vasculitis which can affect the veins periplebitis example is heels disease and uh, when there is a rise to intraocular pressure when the intraocular pressure rises beyond a particular limit the blood flow is affected that also can lead to occlusion so coming to the basic pathogenesis so wherever when what are the sites where the occlusion can occur the sites most commonly where the occlusion can occur is where the retina crosses the where the artery crosses the vein in the retina the sites where the artery crosses the vein in the retina so retinal vein or artery crossover points are the major sites of rvo so veins have weaker walls than and then arteries and are usually lie beneath the arteries and hardening of the artery walls may cause compression of the vessels underneath the blood flow restriction may result in thrombus and thus occlusion this is what i have already discussed the artery compresses the vein it affects the blood flow and it leads to coagulation cascade and that in turn leads to thrombus and thrombus leads to occlusion 
Now, if a artery has to compress the vein, the artery has to become very thick. That is commonly seen in hypertension. The thickness of the artery can increase in conditions like that. There are a few conditions like hypertension, atherosclerosis. All these uh, conditions increase the thickness of the artery. So changes in the blood vessel walls. What are the changes in blood vessel walls? The venous endothelium and the intima media are altered. Okay, the inner layers of the vessels are altered. The endothelium swelling and tropic alteration of the blood vessels walls. And clinical evidence support that endothelial dysfunction as a major promoter for atherosclerosis and thrombosis. Apart from this, there are various other hematological factors. Hypercoagulant conditions can also lead to the thrombus formation. So changes in blood composition may affect the blood viscosity, coagulation, hence the blood flow, which can lead to formation of platelet aggregation disorders and high plasma viscosity. The high plasma viscosity aggregation disorders are nothing but they alter the normal blood flow. When they alter the normal blood flow, they promote formation of thrombus. So these are few conditions, are few, few predisposing conditions which lead to vein occlusion. So in, in simple terms, venous occlusion can occur when there is a stagnation of the blood flow, which in turn leads to hypoxia and uh, edema and hemorrhage and increase extravascular pressure. When there is a stop in the blood flow, there is an hypoxia in the retina and there is an increased extravascular pressure. So that will, the veins will burst open and the blood will get spilled. Now, if you see this picture here, this is an, you can see this is the optic nerve, the, you can see the artery and the vein. The artery is slightly lighter in color as compared to Vein. If you see the inferior half here, this is you can see the half of retina is completely filled with blood. Blood is just spilled over all over the retina. Now this is the macular region. You can see the blood uh, superficial hemorrhages which are present all over the retina. Superficial hemorrhages which are present all over the retina are are spread all over the inferior half of the retina. So this is for an example for in hemiretinal vein occlusion. So depending on the amount of uh, site of blood uh, superficial hemorrhages, you classify them into branch retinal vein occlusion or central retinal vein occlusion or hemiretinal vein occlusion or macular vein occlusion so, and so on. Now, if you see this picture here, you can see that there is an inferior, you can see the inferior half is involved, superficial hemorrhages are there cotton wool spots are there. You can see the cup is slightly big here. Probably there is an increased uh, uh, intraocular pressure. So venous tort tort tortuosity and dilatation is classically seen. Flame-shaped and dot blot hemorrhages are seen. Cotton wool spots are seen. Retinal edema is seen. Now, what is the prognosis of acute BRVO? Acute BRVO means once the patient comes to you and you see the patient and we will ask you, what is the prognosis of my vision? What how, how, Will my vision return to normal? So first thing you have to do is first check out his systemic condition. Check out whether he is having hypertension, diabetes, or any hypercoagulative disorders. Then the next thing what you have to do is, uh, what is the presenting visual acuity? Presenting visual acuity means at the time of presentation, what was the vision of the patient. If the vision of the patient having BRVO is 6 12 or better, 6 by 12 or better, then the prognosis is better or good over a period of 6 months. That means there are chances that he is likely to improve. If the presenting visual acuity is bad, 6 by 60 or less or less by 6 by 18, then the prognosis is guarded. You cannot say how the vision is going to improve. So at presentation, what are the features? Superficial hemorrhages, that is flame-shaped or dot and blot hemorrhages, venous tortuosity, venous dilatation, cotton wool spot, 
and retinal edema. So what are the complications of this VRVO? Since there is retinal edema, if the edema does not resolve over a period of time, then the patient can have chronic macular edema. Since there is ischemia, there is no ischemia and there is a, no oxygen or hypoxia, it leads to vascular endothelial factors generation and which in turn leads to neovascularization. Now, what are the investigations? <laughs> investigations in case of branch retinal vein occlusion. So, the most common investigation which is commonly performed to identify the level of occlusion is the fundus fluorescein angiography. You inject a dye into the veins and you take photographs of the retina. If you see in this particular picture, this slightly black color which you are seeing here, that is the vein and this is the artery. So the, the dye has filled up the artery and it has started to fill up in the veins. And you can see here, there is an occlusion at this level, which indicates that there is uh, there is a uh, branch retinal vein occlusion. Wherever the hemorrhages are there, that area is seen as dark black spots. So those are nothing but hypofluorescent areas. Okay, those are called as hypofluorescent areas. So when the edema is developed in the retina, late hyperfluorescence is usually seen. You can see the brightest areas, is whichever is there, they are called as hyperfluorescence. That is due to diffuse edema. Now, what are the signs of old branch retinal vein occlusion? We have till now seen what is fresh branch retinal vein occlusion. If you see in this picture, around the vessels, there is a white layer which is formed around the veins. That is called as sheathing. And you can see a lot of new blood vessels forming in between the branches of the vein. So in between the tributaries of the vein. So those new blood vessels are called as collateral. So these are signs of old BRO which has already started to recover. And you can see a lot of hard exudates also sometimes. If you see a branch retinal vein occlusion with sheathing, with new vessel, sorry, with collaterals and with uh, hard exudates, then you are looking at a patient who is having old branch retinal vein occlusion. Okay. What is the management here? How do you manage a case? Management all depends on what is the presenting visual acuity. How much is the macular edema? So first you do a fluorescein angiography and see if there is macular edema. If the macular edema is present, then you think of managing it. Otherwise, you don't manage it, you leave it alone. So when there is a macular non-perfusion, no treatment is given. So if you see in this area, the area between these two arcades is the macula. There is no perfusion of uh, uh, blood in this particular area. So that is, you don't require to do any treatment. If good macular perfusion is there and visual acuity is 6 by 18 or worse, after three months, consider laser photocoagulation. Now coming to the next type, that is neovascularization. If neovascularization develops, what is the problem? It can proceed to neovascular glaucoma. So to prevent that complication, wherever neovascularization has taken place, that region you give photocoagulation or laser photocoagulation. You can see small yellow dots which are seen in the retina, in the inferior part of the retina here. So these are nothing but spots of laser photocoagulation. So laser photocoagulation is mainly to, uh, mainly to prevent neovascular glaucoma or neovascular complications which can occur in future in case of PRVO. Now coming to central retinal vein occlusion or CRVO. So if you see, compare it to the previous picture, you can see the blood is spilled over all over the retina. It gives an appearance of tomato splash appearance, like just like if you throw a tomato on the wall, how it spills over all over the wall, it gives such an appearance. So it is called as tomato splash appearance. So the visual acuity is usually, presenting visual acuity is usually CFCF CF or counting fingers close to face. And uh, APD 
is nothing but efferent pupillary defect and mild venous tortuosity and dilatation, mild to moderate retinal hemorrhages, variable amount of cotton wool spots, and uh, chronic macular edema. These are all clinical features of the features are common, whether it is BRVO or whether it is CRVO. There is edema, there are hemorrhages all over the retina. Depending on the extent of hemorrhages, you classify it into CRVO or BRVO, whether it is ischemic or non ischemic. If it is ischemic, it is very, very severe hemorrhages. If it is non ischemic, the severity of hemorrhages is slightly less. And the prognosis of vision usually depends on the presenting visual acuity. If you see this picture here, the fundus fluorescent angiography of a non ischemic central retinal vein occlusion, you can see there is a le the level of occlusion is somewhere in the optic disc, but it is called non ischemic because the amount of hemorrhages which are seen on the retina is not so severe as in case of ischemic CRVO. You can see a lot of black spots are seen all over the retina. These are all hypofluorescent areas and you can see some hyperfluorescent areas in the center indicating that there is some amount of diffuse edema which is present in the macula. Now this is ischemic central retinal vein occlusion. If you see that the visual acuity is CF uh, less than 6 by 60, APD is marked, and that is the afferent pupillary defect. You can see the extent of hemorrhages which are seen all over the retina. The disc margins are not clear, disc is swollen, optic disc is swollen. There is marked amount of venous tortuosity and engagement and engorgement and retinal hemorrhages are present all over. Cotton wool spots are seen, severe disc edema, macular ischemia, very, very poor prognosis. 50% of these cases develop rubiosis iridis. Rubiosis iridis is nothing but development of the red, development of new vessels on the iris. Now, if you see this FA, you can see that the, the amount of macular ischemia which is present, there is a lot of capillary non-perfusion areas. You can see all these black areas are nothing but non-perfusion areas. So these are, are, there is no perfusion in this particular area. There is no, go, the blood supply is not reaching to that particular area because it has got blocked by, by the central retinal vein occlusion. Now, Till now, we have seen the clinical features of CRVO and BRVO. So, basically, in CRVO or BRVO, the features are almost the same. Only the amount and the extent of the hemorrhages which are seen in the retina. If it is in one particular sector, then it is branch retinal vein occlusion. If it is involving the complete retina, depending on the extensor, extension of the hemorrhages, you either classify it into ischemic or non-ischemic CRVO. So what is the level of occlusion wherever the crossing over of the artery vein is occurring in the retina, then it is branch retinal vein occlusion. If it is occurring at the level of optic narrow head or the lemonac fibrosa in the optic narrow head, then it is central retinal vein occlusion. What is the prognosis? Prognosis depends upon the presenting visual acuity. If the presenting visual acuity is poor, then the prognosis is poor. When do you treat or when do you give lasers, you, whenever you are suspecting there is a complication which is likely to occur. That is, when does the complication occur? When you follow up the patient, if there is a, a new vessel formation in the retina, there are new vascularizations formation in the retina, then you treat the patient by killing the new vessel formation. That is by giving the laser photocoagulation. So this is what are the investigations available in the present date for this case. For ocular imaging, you use FFA or OCT, optical coherence tomogram and fundus fluorescein angiography. Apart from that, you have to evaluate the systemic association which need to be looked for. These are hypertension, diabetes, heart diseases, dyslipidemia, hypercoagulative conditions, homocystinosis, mainly in young patients. So all the systemic factors, hypercoagulative condition, hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, these have to be ruled out. You have to see the status of heart. The thorough cardiovascular examination is imminent or is very, very important in case of BRVO. Now coming to management, as we have already discussed, 
the prognosis depends on the visual acuity, presenting visual acuity. Now, this, if you can see this picture here around the iris, there are formation of new blood vessels along the pupillary border. This is called as rubiosis iridis. I mean, if you see in the angle, there are formation of new vessels in the angle. So, that is on gonioscopy. If you are seeing new vessels on gonioscopy in the angle, then you are sure that patient is definitely going to go for complications related to CRVO or VRVO. So, so what do you do for such patient? You just burn the retina because when there is ischemia, you are the ischemia leads to release of the factors called vascular endothelial growth factors, which in turn leads to formation of new vessels. So that is nothing but neovascularization. So to prevent that, you give laser. You convert ischemic or hypoxic retina into anoxic retina. I will repeat again. You convert ischemic or hypoxic retina into anoxic retina. So anoxia, once the anoxia develops, there is no oxygen required in that particular retina. So there is no ischemia, no hypoxia. It is completely anoxic. So new blood vessels will not develop. Once the new blood vessels do not develop, then the complications such as rubiosis iridis, neovascular glaucoma are very, very unlikely to occur. So what do you do for that? You do a pan retinal photocoagulation. You just, photocoagulation is nothing but you coagulate the retina by giving laser energy. So what is laser energy? It is, what does it do? It simply burns the retina. Sparing the macular region, you burn the complete retina. So that once it burns, once you burn the complete retina, it becomes completely anoxic and it does not promote formation of new vessels. So coming to the last slide, management of CRVO. We have seen what are the systemic conditions which can lead to form lead to formation of CRVO. So treatment of systemic and ocular associations. If there is an raised intraocular pressure, you have to treat the raised intraocular pressure. If there is a <coughs> hypertension or any hypercoagulative state, you have to treat that particular condition. Diabetes mellitus, you have to treat. Hyperlipidemia, you have to treat. The next management, what do you do? This management is broadly classified into two types. That is, one is pre-intravitreal injection error. The second one is post-intravitreal injection error. Means that before the intravitreal injections came into the picture, what they used to do, they used to just burn the retina completely. But nowadays, that is not the first line of management. The first line of management has changed to giving anti vegfs or steroids. So earlier, what they should do, for whenever there is a CRVO or VRVO, after three months, they, they used to just burn that part of the retina so that it becomes completely anoxic and to prevent any formation of neovascular glaucoma. But nowadays, what they do is they first subside the edema by giving anti vegfs and steroids. So either intravitreal triamcinolone acetate, 1 milligram per 0.1 ml, or dexamethasone, ozurodex can be given, or anti vegfs like bevacizumab, 1.25 mg per 0.1 ml, and ranucizumab, 0.3 mg per 1 ml, or aflipercept. These are the various drugs which are available for intravitreal injection. Now, what do these drugs do? Point number one, these drugs decrease the edema. Second, the point number two, these drugs prevent formation of new vessels. Once they prevent formation of new vessels, there is a less likely complication of development of neovascular glaucoma. So in spite of giving these drugs, if still the patient develops neovascularization, then the last option remains to give a pan-retinal photocoagulation. So the visual prognosis of all these cases depends on the presenting visual acuity. If the wish, presenting visual acuity is poor, then the outcome is poor. The presenting visual acuity is good, then the outcome is better. But whatever is the treatment available today, the main treatment available today is intravitreal injections. How do you do that? You give intravitreal injections. You give in this particular dose, as we mentioned in these slides, 
and you wait and watch for one or two months. If required, you give uh, two or three injections again. If the new blood vessels or new aspirations subside, then you follow up the patient. Otherwise, if still new aspirations are developing, then you have to give pan retinal photocoagulation. So, in short, what is PRVO or CRVO? It is nothing but occlusion in the vein. When there is an occlusion in vein, what does it lead to? It leads to hemorrhages all over the retina. So, when they, depending on the extent of hemorrhages which are seen on the retina, you classify them into CRVO and BRVO depending on the site of occlusion of the vein. Now why is this occlusion occurring? When there is a raised intraocular pressure or when the artery is going and pressing on the vein, the occlusion is occurring. When does the artery press on the vein? When there is an atherosclerosis is one good example for that. So when is that, when does this atherosclerosis develop? It usually is seen in older age group or in patients having hypertension. Who else can have this problem? Patients who are having hypercoagulable state or high viscosity conditions and high homocysteinuria levels, these patients also are likely to develop vein occlusions. So, how does the vein occlusion present that we have already discussed? The treatment as such is to, to address the systemic and ocular conditions and to give intravitreal injections. So, these intravitreal injections, what do they do? They prevent neovascularization and development of complications and they decrease the edema, macular edema in case of CRVO or BRVO. What is the likelihood of development of good vision after these particular conditions? It depends on the presenting visual equity. If the presenting visual equity is bad, the outcome is bad. If the presenting visual equity is good, then the outcome is good. So this summarizes the whole class. I hope you have understood it. So please read the textbook. If you have any clarifications, you can ask me in the next class.